going on everybody welcome back into the channel today we have a new deck list for you guys it's going over a thrawn blue deck for set two going back to our roots this was actually one of the first deck lists that i made for set one and i decided that now is the time to go ahead and give it a set two upgrade i really enjoy playing this deck i think thrawn is a lot of fun uh being able to look at the top card of your opponent's deck kind of playing off of their hand you know what's coming up and there's some good combos you can do with that and i'll go over that as we go through the deck list but again Thrawn is one of my favorite leaders from set one. I think he's a lot of fun to play, though people might get a little bit upset when you're playing against him, but still, I think he's really accurate to the character, which is why I love him so much. The Shadows of Fantasy Flight, they did a very good job with this leader card. Let's go ahead and hop into the leader and talk about him and the base that we play, right? Grand Admiral Thrawn, when the action phase starts, look at the top card of each deck. And so right there, you get to know what your opponent is going to draw next and try to kind of play around that as well and then for an action for the and the cost of one you can go ahead and exhaust thrawn and then you can you know reveal one of the top cards on either deck and then you can exhaust an opponent's card depending on what you reveal it has to be equal or less to the value of one of those cards right but that allows you to kind of slow down your opponent's pace and then try to get to where you want to be in the match right his epic action it requires you to have six resources and then when you have six resources you can go ahead and deploy him and then he gets his ability on his attack rather than having to pay one and exhaust so that's really good right there and he's a three nine so he can has some you know sustainability on the board right as far as the base goes it's just a 30 hp base we're going remnant science facility it's just a 30 hp blue base the blue is going to give you the access to the control pieces that's again going to allow you to kind of extend the game and get to where you want to be in the match so uh, this deck again one of my first decks that i made for set one I'm going to go ahead and bring it to you guys here for set two. It was more of a space centric build for set one, and it is still that way for set two, but there is a little bit other things kind of added and sprinkled in there, which, you know, is kind of fun, right? So let's go ahead and hop into our ground units. We play five total. We have Bazine. Bazine for me is really good to have. Uh, the reason I run Bazine is because I can go ahead and play it on a turn that maybe my opponent is going to play their own vigilance right i can try to stop them from playing vigilance if they're going to go ahead and play cunning things like that you can get ready for their crate dragon you can go ahead and drop it and try to prevent them from playing crate dragon i think this is a very good card and might be needed depending on where you are in the match trying to make sure that you're not going to go ahead and get blasted by one of your opponent's much needed cards so you can go ahead play this card and then uh when played look at your opponent's hand discard a card if you do that player draws a card also the fact that you can play this for smuggle allows you to put it into your resources and really be able to use it in the late game so i played it as a three of because it can be played from your resources so you don't even need to hold it in your hand yes playing it for two is probably good but having it for smuggle is still really good and being able to use it whenever you need it to you know play around certain cards because again you're going to know what's in your opponent's hand from time to time because you know what's going to be on their first draw right so one out of the two cards on each draw you're going to know and this is a very good card that kind of has good synergy with that next i play two atst you'll know why later on but still having this as something that can potentially threaten a late game swing or two and kind of try to get more damage on your opponent and yeah again it's a it has overwhelm it's a six seven for six nothing much more to say i'll talk about it more when we get to the point of the video that really kind of focuses around this but atst i feel like it's pretty good in the deck now going into our space units we do play a little bit more space units than we do ground units but we have inferno four this is going to allow you to kind of cycle through your deck uh on play and on defeat you get to look at the top two cards of your deck and you can decide whether you want to put them on the top or bottom so you can keep one on top and one on the bottom put both to the bottom or keep both on top it allows you to kind of make sure that you're going to draw the cards necessary for the certain situations that are going to be coming up next and again with thrawn's ability you kind of know what your opponent's going to have so you can kind of plan ahead with that as well so that so being able to know what's on your opponent's top deck as well as being able to kind of cycle through your own deck to kind of prepare really makes for good some good synergy right there right next we have a lurking we have three lurking tie phantoms this is just a really really good card it allows you to play this card and attack your opponent so it allows you to kind of get damage on your opponent kind of early if you need to do so and it is a little bit hard to take care of if your opponent does not do it properly right they have to go ahead and sac pretty much sacrifice one of their early on space units to take out the lurking tie phantom it has raid two as well so again it's just a really big threat that cannot be targeted by card effects so it can't be captured damaged or defeated by enemy card ability so it just really can't be targeted uh if you have make an opening 
you know, that would work. But still, again, it's just a really, really good card. And then I also play two tie Advance. Ty Advance allows you to, you know, power up your Lurking Tie Phantom if you really need to. And then you can go ahead and just continue to power and swing into your opponent's base while also playing the control game with the other cards that we have in this deck. So with the addition of Lurking Tie Phantom from set two, it added it adds in that pressure of like you have some offensive momentum if you need it or you can go ahead and play the control game which is what the rest of the deck wants to do but again you have multiple ways to kind of play this thing where you know in the original form of the deck you didn't really have that as much right you weren't really doing a ton of damage early where this deck you potentially have the capability to do that right next we have the avenger we have three of them when played and on attack, an opponent chooses a non-leader unit they control and defeat that unit. It's essentially power of the dark side, but it has to be non-leader. It's just really good if you play your Super Laser Blast. Obviously, we're playing some Super Laser Blasts. If you play Super Laser Blast and then you play Avenger, it's a really good way to kind of try to close out those games. But that's going to do it for our space and ground units. Again, we're not playing a ton of units, but it's enough to still get things done in this deck. The big hunk of the deck is in the events, and we're going to go ahead and hop into those for you guys right now. We have the one restock. Uh, this allows you to choose up to four cards in the discard pile, put them in the bottom of your deck in a random order. Again, you can go ahead and throw in the restock back in the deck, and then you can go ahead and you can grab a couple more of your events, or if you do need some of your units back, you can go ahead and do that. We're rocking three, no good to me dead. Exhaust a unit, that unit can't be ready this round, and it does not, and it cannot be readied in the regroup. So it's just really good in trying to prevent some damage on your base for a couple of turns from a really scary threat make an opening give a unit minus two minus two for this phase heal two damage from your base play it as a two of it's good against other lurking tie phantoms if you need it and again healing your base is always pretty good there we have outmaneuver again we don't have a ton of ground units so more often than not you're going to be exhausting the ground even if we have bazine on the ground you, uh, exhausting bazine is not going to kill you so exhaust the ground so you aren't getting flooded or if there's a ton of space units trying to hit your base just exhaust this is just a way to kind of prevent getting hit with multiple units in a turn and kind of buying you that time to get your super laser blast we have three power of the dark side an opponent chooses a unit they control defeat that unit it's good if you have it in your opening hand you pass you play it on turn two if your opponent doesn't play two units and again you're just kind of trying to control the board with this card and then we have three triple dark raid a very very good card another addition from set two uh search the top seven cards of your deck for a vehicle put them other cards at the bottom of your deck in any order it costs five less and enters play ready so that's key right there and return uh and the the card that you play that comes in ready returns to your hand at the end of the phase so it's really good when you have seven resources and you play this and you can get out a avenger right and then it comes out ready so you get it on play ability and then you get the on attack ability it's just so so strong uh with the addition of triple dark raid i think this deck just gets a lot better you can go ahead and play triple dark raid and kind of like what uh grandma tarkin decks want to do right with their lurking tie phantom tie advance you can do that with this deck as well uh but again you also can go ahead and grab your atsts so you have many options and for the end of the game right when you are when you after you super laser blast and things kind of start to settle down and people don't have many cards in their hand they're playing one card trying to get back trying to get damage on your base you can start playing this you can bring out something you can swing in for damage it comes back to your hand you can play it again next turn it's just a good way to kind of close out games as well as kind of get things started so i really do like this card in this deck next card we play is fell the dragon i decided to go fell the dragon over takedown in the main board because the things that you're kind of worried about are things that are going to be hitting your base for a lot of damage you're going to be afraid of crate dragons which we kind of you know bad you know relentless if they come out you waste another event and then you can go ahead and play fell the dragon get rid of that thing so i think that fell the dragon was a better choice i do play takedown in the sideboard though if i'm playing against other decks that kind of require more takedown rather than fell the dragon but i think that for the most part a lot of things that kind of scare this deck are large attacking units with high power and i think that fell the dragon was the proper choice using fell the dragon on a crate dragon rather than rival's fall i think is just a little bit better next we have three vigilance we all know what vigilance does right in a control deck you discard you can mill someone six 
You can heal five, but you're always going to be healing five for sure. Defeat a unit with three or less can come in handy. And then give a unit a shield token. I would give Lurking Tide Phantom a shield token a shield token if they have plus two plus two from Tide Advance. And that's the only time when I give something a shield. That being said, most of the time I'm going to be milling and healing five. That's kind of what I'm rocking with when it comes to vigilance in this deck, which makes sense for a control deck, right? Next, we have two rivals fall. It's a good way to kind of take out your opponent's leaders, and it's a good way to take out, again, if you have to use it on Crate Dragon, you can go ahead and do it. You can use it on other people's, you know, Devastators and stuff like that, their big ships and stuff like that. So, again, Rivals Fall, just a good removal piece. It gets rid of everything. Super Laser Blast, defeats everything. It's very, it's needed in a deck like this. Next, we're going to be going over into our up grades and we are rocking three top targets right so top target is a bounty that allows you to heal so what's good about this you can put this on something and then use your removal to heal if you put it on a unique unit you can go ahead and heal six which is just another way to kind of heal and it's pretty cheap as well so if you go ahead and play this and fell the dragon for the cost of five you're removing a unit and you're healing up potentially up to six hp which is just really nice we rock three entrenched as you guys know, it's a staple. If we're not playing on the ground, we're entrenching the ground. If we're not having anything in space, we're entrenching the space. We're not going to be entrenching our units very often. Sometimes I'll entrench uh, Thrawn and make him swing big, exhaust something, kill something, and he lasts a little bit longer. But other than that, I don't really entrench many of my units. And then Frozen and Carbonate as a three of. It's just another way to make it so your opponent cannot unexhaust their units. Uh, yes, they can go ahead and try to defeat it using maybe something like Pose Ability. You can go ahead and use Aggression and pop two upgrades. You can go ahead and Disabling Fang Fighter defeat, a, uh, defeat an upgrade. So there are ways to get around it, but I still think early in the match, this is a safe bet and can really come in handy kind of late game if they kind of use their abilities to get rid of their upgrades. I think that this is just a good option to kind of still slow down your opponent, right? So that's the entire list. It's very controlly, but with the additions of Lurking Tide Phantom and Triple Dark Raid, Fell the Dragon, I think that this deck is a little bit more scary. In the first set, it didn't really have that kind of way to close out games as much as it does now. So with the additions of ATST, Lurking Tide Phantom, Triple Dark Raid, you now have the ability to go ahead and start swinging into your opponent's base as well as stopping them from swinging into yours which is what i like about this deck it's still more space centric but you have those options on the ground if you need to with atst bringing out thrawn and swinging more often than not uh i've had a ton of fun with this deck i'm gonna go ahead and i'm going to continue to work on it and probably upgrade a little bit more but this is like the starting uh you know set we're working with and it's a lot of fun i really do enjoy it the list to this uh the link to this list will be down in the description below if you want to check it out but before we go ahead and hop on out here let's go ahead and talk about our sideboard and why i kind of chose what i did right all right now we're gonna go ahead and hop into our sideboard we have one restock uh restock in the sideboard is just to go ahead and add an extra one just in case i am going up against another control deck if i have to go ahead and throw a restock in there in case they're running vigilance and i can go ahead and lose mine off of a mill i think it's good to have a second one in there just as a backup right we have two imprisons for those big threats like someone else's crate dragon or their avenger and stuff like that to be able to imprison them to make it so their abilities go away and then you don't have to worry about especially with crate dragon playing other cards to kind of take care of that big threat right imprison is just a really good card to shut down some big threats i have two takedowns in the sideboard to replace fell the dragon depending on what deck i'm going up against if i have to go ahead and switch out fell the dragon four takedowns i'm playing against a lot of smaller units i'll go ahead and do that but again it's just you know the one for one swap really i have the extra tie advance if i have to go more aggressive with this type of build and then make it so i have to make my imperial units stronger and swing in harder i'll add a third tie advance i also have a third atst again for the same reason I have a third Rivals Fall, again, just in case I really need it if I'm playing against someone with a ton of big units and kind of stalling me out, I, I can go ahead and throw in the Rivals Fall. And then actually I'm running the Chimera. Now the reason I'm running the Chimera is with Triple Dark Raid, Chimera has an opportunity to shine in a way, right? It comes out ready and you can go ahead and swing right away and you know what's in your opponent's hand already because you are using Thrawn's ability at the start of every action phase uh at the start of every phase I mean so 
it's just being able to play triple dark raid have this cost three so essentially you can get this out for the cost of six and to start making it so your opponent loses cards in their hand it adds to that card hate to kind of play around maybe their take that uh, take downs uh their vigilances their crate dragons avenger relentless this is just another option to potentially go ahead and use that if they are using those big threats i think that it's a lot of fun because i don't think really many people expect a chimera so i think that it has an opportunity with triple dark raid and thrawn's ability to really shine and at some points i go ahead and i throw it in there as just kind of that piece they're like oh okay i did not expect that and you can go ahead and chuck something out of their hand so it's just a really nice combination piece plus i like to keep it a little bit on theme and obviously thrawn and the chimera they work really well together so and that's going to do it for this deck uh we have obviously the main board and the sideboard now it's a ton of fun again this is one of my first decks that i've ever started making in star wars unlimited so it's near and dear to my heart i also really like thrawn as a character so definitely if you want to try out this deck you want to check it out check down in the description down below the link to the deck list will be down there try it out let me know what you guys think again it's a ton of fun yes boba fett and sabine are still really scary but you can go ahead and what's cool about this deck is that it if you can get through the early game against most decks you have a really good chance to win right so you're going to want to try to hold on to your entrenches for boba fett sabine other big threats from hitting your board you know using your control pieces early to make it so you hit that late game drop a super laser blast and then you're off and running with your triple dark rage your lurking tie phantom tie advance and all your big shifts to then start coming in on your opponent and start getting in your damage when you can you're using your healing pieces like pop target and vigilance to make sure you stay healthy enough so you can go ahead and do it make an opening in case your opponent has a lurking tie phantom you can go ahead and pop that real quick right so there's a lot of options in this deck that weren't quite there in the first set which is why i really enjoy playing it so again if you guys are new here make sure you hit that sub button support is always appreciated and you know until next time i'll see you guys in the next video bye